Greg here again with another video helping you transform your business, transform your life. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one to many relationships and seeing how they can be created inside of Odoo. So like always, please go below, click like, click subscribe. It really helps me out. So now we're going to basically build on what we did in the previous video, which was learning about how one to many relationships work and why you might use them in some of those examples. So I'm going to link, put a link above to that video so you can uh, reference it. If you have any confusion at all about why you would use one to, relation, one to many relationships. In this case, we're going to take and actually create them. Now, I'm just going to jump right into doing this with code. And so what we basically want to do is add, in this case, we're going to use an example of animals that we might have in a, in a, in a veterinary office. So Odoo out of the box, managing a, a veterinary hospital, it's going to take a little bit of customization to get something that would work with that workflow. And by a little bit, I mean it shouldn't take a whole lot to at least get by with maybe you don't have everything you want, but you can collect that core information that you need to do business. And one of these things you're going to need is a way to store animals and attach them to who the customer is that brings their pets in. And, and in this case, a one-to-many works well because everybody has their own animals. They're only going to belong to one customer in this in this case in this model and so for every customer one customer they can have many animals and that's what we're going to create right here and we'll leave off where we left off with the many to one because we can still use the same app for this we're just creating <clears throat> new models and a one to many relationship. So in this case, we're going to learn a little bit more. It's going to be a little, you know, trying to build on it a little bit. So if this video is a little complicated for you, go back to the many to one video. This one's going to build a little bit more because we're going to create a class to hold our animals. So we'll do that by just saying class vet contact. So I'm just saying that given this the name that I want to name it, and we always have model, not model here for any model definitions. I apologize if my voice is a little scratchy, <coughs> but I want to get this video out. And we inherit this time from res.partner. So this is going to be the many to one field that we're going to use to hold, I'm sorry, our one to many field to hold our animals. So I'm going to say animals IDs equals fields dot one to many. And this is where we're going to create a new model that's going to hold these animals. We haven't created that yet, but I know I'm going to create it. I'm going to call it vet.animal. And we're going to have inside of it an owner ID. Now let's go ahead and create a class for our animal. And we'll link these together. And this is why I usually do copy and paste. I was just kind of in a mood to type a little more tonight. Um, name you're going to have here. So notice how we have a name specified in this one, but we don't in these two. And that's because they're inheriting from models inside of Odoo. This is a model we are creating. There is no inheritance in this model. And then we have a, a name that we'll use for our animal name. And I'll actually put that in there so we just so we know. And we could have a birth date, for example. And we can have any other information that would be specific to the animal. And a breed and species, so I could say breed, would be maybe a good example of where we'd have a mini to one like this. And come down here and make a vet breed model that would have a name vet.breed. And this would be animal breed. And um, this would actually be breed, like that. So I created two new models here that's going to show off again the mini to one, which we had in the last video of we want to have a list of animal breeds. We don't want to just have uh, people be able to type. And then I would challenge you to do the same thing here with species and create 
you know, the, the other, another mini to one that would, would keep that as well. But uh, this gets us to the point of where we can come here though and say owner ID equals fields mini to one with res.partner. And that's all there is to it. <clears throat> to create our relationships. We have our one to many here that is extending our contact inside of Odoo. And so that means every contact now has that option to have animals attached to them, which is exactly what we want for a veterinary clinic. And then we created a new model to hold our animals, which didn't take long. We just created a little bit of information and it's kind of a little bonus in this video I went ahead and created another relationship down here to uh, the breed and this is a many to one because there can be many different breeds but only one can be assigned to an animal and an animal can only have one breed and an animal can only have one owner so it kind of shows you here the the similarity in model design is animal can have only one breed and they can only be belong to one owner and this owner is res.partner which ties up to here now we could leave this out and we would still have the database essentially remaining uh, the same in a, in a logical perspective um, uh, or i should almost say a technical perspective but this is what we need in order to you know realize this inside of the model so that we can reference the other side of this mini to one right here and that's what this is doing. And so that's why this has to match this. Okay, and so now when we're done, we can restart. And there's one thing that you have to do when you add new models uh, to Odoo now, is that we're gonna get a, an incidence here when we go to actually, yeah, and here they are. Okay, so you notice these are warnings. They're not full out errors, but these warnings are important and they, they're telling you right here that uh, the, the model vet.animal has no access rules and the model vet.breed has no access rules. So we need to copy this, and this is the easiest way just to simply, when you're developing, uh, not have to worry about this uh, syntax, is just to go to your security.irmodel.access and get rid of the one that's there and paste in the one that they gave you for an example. And this is giving access to any user to read, write, delete, and modify this table. So you can change this out if you want more granular access rules. And this is the flags for the, the create, write, update, delete kind of thing. The crud, read, yeah, create, read, up, dot, update, delete. And then uh, we'll do another one and do the same thing. So when you're developing, typically, this is what I would do. So when we, if we restart that, that's not gonna give us what we need because Odoo in our manifest here comments out the link in the, to the, the model access file. So it's there, the link to it's there, but you just have to uncomment it. These pound signs are, are comment. So now Odoo's gonna be able to pick up this file with these access rules in it for our new models. So now I'll restart, and at that point I see there's no errors here uh, that, that are tripping us up, and what I will do is go into our developer mode here now and use it to make sure that our models got updated correctly. So I'm gonna activate the developer mode. It looks like it's already activated, and we will come here to models. and type an animal and sure enough there's vet.animal and I'll click on it and so this is the model we created in code right there and you'll notice that in addition to the fields we defined so we have name birth date breed and owner ID are the ones that we provided but you can see here that it created you know the right date the right user ID display name create user create date and this last update, these were all created by the Odoo framework and they come by default with every model. You're just gonna get them there, along with the ID that gives us a, an incremental ID that, that moves up. So there's our animal model. And if we come and we look at our res.partner, click here, 
we will see at the very top animal underscore IDs by one to many has been created. So our models are done. And now we can move on to seeing how we can put this one to many onto our form. So I'll begin by pulling up our views and looking at our views XML. And here's the one that we created for our many to one. So we'll use this same file and we'll be creating a record here. And we can go ahead and copy this and paste it for some of our syntax so we don't have to start from scratch. And instead of many to one inspector field, we'll call this one to many animals. So we're going to list the animals inside of the customer record. So when we come here, this is what we're trying to achieve is to be able to come here into our orders customers. And when we pull up our customer, Bob Sacamano here, we're going to be able to have a tab here that has all the animals that are associated with Bob. And so we know we want to inherit ID from, uh, and actually I'll go down here first. We know our model is rest.partner. Now we need to know what form ID we want to add, our, add that to. And so that's why we're here. This is the form we want to add our animals to. So let's go ahead up here to our debug mode, edit form view, and we can come down here, and, or up here, I'm sorry, and see that this external ID right here, base.view underscore partner underscore form, if I copy this and now paste it into here, now we know from this syntax exactly what, what form we're inheriting from, and then we know that we want the model this, and then now it's time to find inside our, of our notebook the page, and so I know that we could probably do page here, I think. Um, but what I'll do, just to make sure, because syntax is important. You know, you get one of these things wrong and it's a mess. So instead, really quickly, just come up to search and paste in page like this. And now I can see all these examples. And I was right. So anytime I'm adding something to a page, and this one's going to help me right here, this gives me exactly what I need is I'm going to have the XPath page. I'm going to find an ID and position after it whatever I want. And um, it looks like you can now page name and find things too. So notice here it's finding um, the page name as well. So one of those two are going to work for us uh, to find the page and then position after the page. Notice how we can put whatever page we want. So I will take this one and copy it. And actually, I can take the first probably three here. I'm going to take all three of those. And remove this X path and paste those. And actually, I could have kept that last X path to end this off. So here we go. This is our, our patch, basically, that's actually going to show our animals in, in there. And so for our, our string on the page, uh, we can make it whatever we want. And so we'll say animals. And we need an ending page here. Oh wait, actually we need an ending group here. There's a lot of things I could have brought with us that I didn't. So the page starts here and then the page contains a group. The page ends here and then the X path ends here. So this is, this is getting there. Um, the page string, animals, we'll call this animals. And now what we want to do is find the, the name that we want to use for our, our page here. So let's jump over here and we can come down and look at this and see that it says contacts, contact addresses. So I can say copy like that and paste it in there like that. So it's going to find it and we want this before. We want the animals to be the first in the list because when somebody comes in they're going to want to see that. We'll just say. Now we just need to put the field in that we want and so I'm going to copy that into here. And if there's any ambiguity or you have any doubts of what you're going to have to put in there, you just copy it from your model. So it's right here. I want that 
to be here. And notice we got an animals tag here. Ah, and that's not bad. I think that'll work for us for, for our example. So I come here to animals and I can add and our animal name will be Fido. And notice how we have a birth date pop up and we have an owner and we would default this to Bob Sacamano. And that would be something for another video of showing how to pass a context on so we can get a default uh, value here when we create this. Uh, but we can make our breed here and we'll say dog and it'll actually create the dog now in our mini to one there and save and close. So there's Fido and we can add another dog or another animal, uh, Frisky, sounds like a cat and we'll make Frisky in January and we'll say cat and notice how dog is in the list now and we can choose between dog and cat. And the owner, we can pick whoever we want the owner to be. We'll put in the Bob so we can see here that we have everything we need for what I think is a pretty good uh, start to a mini to one. Now, it's the, it seems to still default to one of showing this. Um, that That's something that we can fix as well, you know, with another another change in our source code. But in this case, we're really, we're trying to look at one to many. I don't want to get this too long down application development. That's why I have my courses. Uh, if you're really interested in becoming a master Odoo developer, then you want mastering Odoo development. And I will provide links below. I really enjoy de developer coaching. It's one thing to watch videos. It's a completely different thing to have someone help walk you through when you get stuck and help you design your systems and, and get some actual developer mentor tutoring where you can ask me questions. So please take uh, a few seconds if you are <clears throat> interested and serious about Odoo development to take a look at my courses. I offer a lot of different courses at different price levels, something for everybody uh, from just do it yourself all the way to where I will work with you hands on to help you create the system that will help transform your business help uh, transform and, and perhaps, you know, change uh, your future. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate that. Please leave some comments down below and I will talk to you soon.